Hey guys, Eric and Roth here to talk about The Strain, a highly anticipated show, really amazing people behind it. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, Guillermo del Toro. It's based on books that he co-wrote. He directed the pilot. Carlton Cuse from Lost is running it. And he wrote the books in yeah. anticipation of the series. I mean, he basically wrote the books because he couldn't at that time make the series. So right. he was like, well, I want to get this story out there somehow. And so it was always intended to be a TV series. Yeah. And you haven't read the books, right? I have not. So neither have I. So we're, I, we should say we're coming from the stance of two people who haven't read the books. Um, but yeah, let's talk about our overall impressions. We were both really excited about this. What did you think of The Strain? And we've seen the first three episodes. First three, yeah. I yeah. think he gives really good monster and yes. that makes itself known particularly in episode three mm -hmm. there's just an awesome really cool version of a vampire which won't be entirely unknown to you if you know sort of del toro's take on that yeah and if you look at something reference something like blade 2 it's not it's not out of the realm of of sort of what's been imagined right. even by him but it's really cool and it's a great monster however mm -hmm. having said that a lot of the stuff with the human story and the human characters is clunky and it doesn't entirely work. It may even out over time. Yeah. Pilots are often clunky. Yeah. I, I, yeah, when I was watching it, I was feeling a little uneasy in the early scenes. It's just, and yes, this is the tricky stuff for any show to the establishment, get your characters and say who they are, mm -hmm. can be clunky, but this felt a little just overly off and mannered. That's the main thing is like, there were people, there's, you know, the main character, he works for the CDC and, He's kind of speechifying, and it's it's the scene where he's telling both the a guy he's talking to and the audience, "Here's what I know," but it felt really forced. I felt, and there was a lot of stuff like that where the characters are kind of presenting who they are, and it just didn't feel natural. It didn't feel natural, and it's almost it was almost over explainy yeah. at a certain point, and like you mentioned, highly expositional, which again is one of those things that you sort of understand to some degree when you're trying to establish right. a world that is in a very unusual place in terms of like there's a vampire attack, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, or a monster invasion of some, some sort, <laughs> right. which I, I don't think is spoilery. I think you know that going yeah. into the show. Um, the acting is not bad. It's, it's, it is in the writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in the dialogue. It is incredibly clunky, clunky very broadly drawn characters so far. Um, and it's weird because I can't, I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day. I think I was actually talking about it with Jim. Del Toro is amazing in so many ways, and especially he does really great characters in his Span Spanish language films. But sometimes, I, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes, like there's a, in his work that is English language based. Sometimes it does feel incredibly broad. Yeah. Um, the characters, and I'm not sure why that is. If it's um, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with you, and I have the same thing with movies because you know there's films like Pan's Labyrinth he's made that I think are just freaking genius. They're genius beyond not genius. just in the effects realm, but it's just a genius it, movie. Top yeah. to bottom. Uh, but there's some of his other stuff can feel a little more mannered and strange, and this was like that. And like you know, like you said, performance wise, look, Corey Stahl is the lead. He just came off of House of Cards, yeah. a rightfully acclaimed performance. We know he's a great actor, but he's kind of saddled with some of this stuff early on that's, I think, hard for any actor to really deliver naturally. I have to rant about the milk, Please which rant. is one of those things that I know some people are going, what's your issue with, like, when they watch it, some people will say that's stupid, it's, not, it's so inconsequential. I saw this pilot with Matt Fowler in Austin at the ATX TV Festival, and we both were like so in on that milk. It's a, it's, they give the character, his, the main character has this affectation of that he, he drinks milk like someone else would drink a beer or a soda. Yeah. Yeah. Like that is his sidekick, uh, Sean Astin, has to have milk ready for him. And he comes up to a scene of a big, crazy, you know, CDC uh, thing. And he, he's chugging milk. And it's just one of those things that feels very overly written. Someone's like, you know what's going to make him quirky? Milk. Milk. <laughs> and I guess I think it just sort of puts the spotlight on the issues the show has. Yeah. But we should say, I mean, you mentioned it. It delivers great on the horror. And I think the pilot, I mean, there's, there's a scene uh, about halfway in that is a kind of a big, like, this just happened yeah. moment, and uh, when I saw it in Austin, it got a big applause, rightfully so, because it's a great kind of, not a gotcha, it's not a scare moment, but just a gory, visceral, cool, cool moment. Yeah, Creepy, and the the work, the effects work, we should say, yeah. like the practical effects makeup work yeah. is remarkable. It's great it's looking. It's so good, and it does have sort of a creepy tone to it at the open with the first event that happens and the investigation mm. into that. Right. Um, and it does have very wonderfully creepy horror moments. And it's not bad, it's just, I think that my expectations were so high for yeah. the show um, 
that I couldn't help but be a little bit disappointed that I wasn't connecting really with any of the human characters. Because the, the thing is, in a show like this, I'm going to watch it because of the horror and I'm probably going to enjoy it. But if there's nobody that I'm really linking to, I'm not going to feel the sense of tension and weight and consequences quite as much because I'm going to be like, well, I guess kill him. Right, you right. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you want to care about these people while they're being massacred. Yes. Um, I will say I did love David Bradley. Um, I did too. Who's, you know, coming off this amazing run with Mr. Filch and uh, Walder Frey and he's become this like god of genre in, you know, his uh, older age. And uh, he's great here, very fun character. A character that sort of embraces the ridiculousness a little more, yes. so I think that helps, you it's, know? It, it's funny, I was I was thinking that about David Bradley, and I was wondering if it was really conscious on his part. First of all, just as a tiny little side note, I interviewed him at TCA's last year, and he could not be a more lovely, Super wonderful, nice. yeah. awesome guy. Yep. I love him as a person, but he's also a really good actor, and he plays these roles so well. And he does. He's that, he's that guy that, like, has the information, mm -hmm. but he's so good at delivering it and understanding what he's doing and, yeah. and going kind of like winking to the audience and even inside of of the show, in the world of the show, he's right. sort of winking to the other characters like, hey, we both know this is crazy, <laughs> right. yet and still, I know stuff about vampires. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you should know? listen to me. So you should probably <laughs> listen to me. So yeah. he is great and I, I think that as I was watching, you know, the first episode felt clunky and then it yeah. started to sort of even out and find its footing as it went along. And my hope is that it will happen even more so. Yeah, the first is the most awkward. The second and third are still not what I want it to be, but they're sort of maybe hopefully finding the footing. Yeah. Yeah, and especially as we get to know who the monsters are, mm -hmm. um, that becomes really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a show uh, sort of tailor made for us, which is why I think, like you said, huge expectations. We're definitely going to stick with it. Uh, you know, even just on the makeup effects alone, it would be worth it. But, you know, there's some stuff there I'm hoping will really start to come together, right? I hope so, too. Uh, so, yeah, let us let us know what you think. The Strain is going to debut uh, on Sunday, July 13th. Let us know what you think after you see it in the comments. And we'll have plenty more on the show coming up here on IGN.